Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen today. I titled this message Beyond the Color of Skin, Beyond the Color of Skin. When I decided to take the people of God seriously, take my personal faith seriously, I noticed that God was showing me that I needed to look beyond the color of skin. You see, myself, years back, used to think in terms of what I felt black people needed to pay attention to, what was told to me by other black people on what we needed to focus on. I was influenced by individuals who felt that they were quite knowledgeable in black culture, black history, all things black. And so quite naturally, when you admire people who know more than you, you want to walk down the path that they are on. But these folks did not have spiritual compasses. If anything, they were very critical of those who had a faith. And so I thought to myself that I see your knowledge and I appreciate it, but you're not very wise. I see that you are all things related to black, but you do know that we live in a land where there is the majority who does not look like us. We need to be able to get along with some folks. You feel me? We can't just run around talking about everything that stands for black by black. And meanwhile, there are some things that I can't obtain because black doesn't have the power to obtain them. Let me say that again. There were some things that I wanted to obtain But I quickly realized that black didn't have the power to obtain those things. I know for some of you all that you are in a bit of a dilemma, whether you're white, black, red, yellow, or something else, because you've got individuals who want you to treat them a certain way, respect them, you see, whoever them might be. And you find that, well, if I do this and if I do that, you know, what will this one think and what will that one say and do and all that? If you're going to be down for any cause, you're going to have to experience the types of things or at least come close to experiencing the type of things that those people over there have experienced. Stay with me. Because some folks, I don't think they know just how deep being friends with a black person (laughs) is going to be like. Some folks don't necessarily think that deeply on how it might be being friends with a white person and the types of things that you two will discuss just might uplift Or it might make you at odds with one another because the relationships across the color lines aren't going to get any easier. They're going to be more challenging because we've got those folks that still won't look beyond color. See, if you want to be in a friendship with someone simply because of the color of their skin and you've got a few things in common oh boy (laughs) that's not much of a foundation if you want to just date because you're curious and that person is non-black well (laughs) get ready for an interesting ride because that person is affiliated with folks don't that don't necessarily like you or your people you see We have, yes, as they like to say in media, a lot of work to do. Like they say out there on the street, oh, we got 
a lot of things we need to take care of that we need to think about that we need to make necessary changes yes and part of that is we've got to not just look at who is in front of us and what skin they are in but beyond that what is happening in a country that so many in other lands want to be a part of some folks have changed their minds you know what america is going through some things and if they're treating those people like that they just might treat us like that exactly exactly when there is not enough people in positions of power you can protest until you're blue in the face you can throw money here there and everywhere you can talk about how you want to sit down and talk to some folks about their experiences but you're not putting them though in positions of power because that's ultimately what folks want Thank you for acknowledging the fact that I'm black and black culture and experience and what have you, but I want power. That's what I want. I want an opportunity to sit where you sit. I want an opportunity to be able to make powerful decisions i want to be a mover and shaker excuse me make room for me because i'm coming to your boardroom okay no we don't want you in our boardroom why because well and then they're going to come up with uh let's see lack of experience um let's see you don't have the degree uh let's see who do you know you know there's all of these all of these um, levels to get to a level. There's all of these things that you've got to jump over in order to finally be considered for only to be set back. So you give me a position in your bed. Uh, didn't slaves have positions like that? And you give me a position out there in your field. And didn't slaves as well as athletes get that position? And then you tell me that you've got an opportunity for me. And that opportunity is not an opportunity that puts me in a position of power. And you say I'm supposed to be grateful for that. You put people who look like me, people who you feel comfortable with, people who make you laugh. I've done my share of making people laugh to get into some doors and to get some folks to trust me. But then after a while, you get tired of that. We've got those individuals that they're comfortable with a certain type of black. We can't make this up. It's a fact. Those of us who have observed, I came across a tweet by a woman named Brittany Cooper, and I'm going to read some of her tweets, and it's going to get some folks to thinking. And then at the bottom of the tweet, I'm going to mention the individual who spoke for himself, being a white man, on Brittany Cooper's tweets. She starts off by saying something that, uh, yes, once again, you're going to think about. I look at some of the black folks that liberal white folks love. And all I'm saying to you is that some of your faves get the deepest side eye from black people. Y'all be picking non-threatening black folks, the ones that make you feel good and redeemable. Can we say A-listers, black A-lister celebrities? Yeah, because they've been cultured. They've been trained. They know how to assimilate. And those are the ones who will share their platform with individuals who have been cultured and trained and comfortable speaking 
in the way that makes those that are non-black comfortable. Yes, there are blacks who have received opportunities. And yes, there are those that have their share of power, such as in Oprah Winfrey. But when you look at Oprah Winfrey's history, you know what she had to do in order to get what she's got today. Another quote from Brittany, it is to these blacks that you give money, institutional positions, power, book deals, and platforms. But if those black folks ain't got a deep bench of other black folks to vouch for them, uh uh-oh, you should be careful. You see, this is that kind of advice that some white folks want to hear, they want to know about. If you want me to help you, can you share with me on who to help? Because just like in white culture, there are those that we don't even deal with. We need to know what specifically do you want us to do for black folks who truly need help? Not the black folks who already know how to play the game. Those that are like us, we don't want to help them. We want to help, (laughs) dare we say it, real black folk. Okay, well, you're listening to one today. (laughs) But I've also been educated and trained and cultured. Mm. You see, I've been on the side where there's those that are comfortable with my type because I'm going to behave myself. But then there are those who aren't comfortable with my type because depending on the season, I may not behave myself. And this is why some of us, you say, how come she don't have more views? How come there's not more people buying her books? Because they don't necessarily trust that one that can flip on them at any given moment. Mm. Brittany Cooper says, if those black folks are conflicted about their blackness, you know, those ones that make white people feel comfortable who are cultured, right, and dignified and so forth. That's who she's talking about. If those black folks are conflicted about their blackness, if they are overly impressed that you, a white person, especially if you have clout, is paying them some attention, then both all of y'all are in a circle, jerk of external and eternalized white supremacy, Lord Jesus. Let me say that again and let me slow it down. If those black folks are conflicted about their blackness, if they are overly impressed that you, a white person, especially if you have clout, is paying them some attention, then both, all of y'all, are in a circle, jerk of external and internalized white supremacy. Ooh, the blind leading the blind. (laughs) Can we say that? We get some folks that are just oh so happy to be in a white circle because they know that if I do right, I just might get rewarded. I might be at the top. It's going to be easy. To keep them in a box. It's going to be easy to use them as a pawn in a game. A black face. Hmm. Marketing white supremacy. Interesting concept. A black face. Being able to share information with the masses that helps our white supremacy goals. Hmm. That's been happening for centuries.
And another tweet by Brittany. Find the black people who are unimpressed by you. She's dropping some tips for some folks who feel a bit empathetic, sympathetic toward black people and what they've gone through in this country. She says, find the black people who are unimpressed by you. Read, cite, and give love to the black people that other black people read. This isn't an exact science. Some black folks with integrity got crossover appeal, but they are the few, not the many. Now, let's take a pause from Britney's tweets. And then there is not playing PlayStation. He says, after she has a series of tweets about advising white people on what type of black people you might want to (laughs) support. He says, this seems weird. Now, liking black people isn't enough. We can only like certain black people and not others. I need to only like black people that certain black people like. Can I just like who I like? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Isn't it? Yes, in a perfect world. But we know that we don't live in a perfect world. That's why we call on Jesus, don't we? We know that we've got individuals who are conditioned, brainwashed, bamboozled into believing that what they are doing is helping people in general when that is not the case. There are those who are black who are specifically being used to help white supremacy stay alive. White people, black people who are allowed to be in white circles because they know how to stay in their position, stay in their lane. If, and I have personally done this because I wanted to see the reaction of a white person who told me that she doesn't have issue with black people and she's quite comfortable and she doesn't look at things as black and white like me (laughs) and how I was raised because I shared a little information about how just as we got some prejudice, racist type of type of white folks, we got some prejudice black folks too. Oh, well, I wasn't raised like that, she said. Mm, okay, I needed to test this woman out a little bit. And so I decided that I was going to bring up some things that uh, was what the workplace would say, constructive criticism. Me, a black woman, a black woman who has been in three higher institutions of learning, (laughs) stayed in school for six years and still didn't get my degree, but that's a whole nother story. Who has been in many white circles, learned from some of the best of them, as well as black circles and learned oh so much street knowledge. I decided to offer her some constructive criticism based on my extensive experience. And there was this look that showed up. Oh, okay. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. And then the next thing you know, she was delegating some responsibility to me to keep me a bit busy while she sat back and nursed her ego. Would she have been that way had it been someone who didn't look like her? Maybe and maybe not. But there was an attitude that creeped up on this woman that I recognize having been around white people. That when you tell them something and you're black, they get their attitudes too. So I tend to think that she wouldn't have reacted that way had I been someone else. The audacity that this black woman is telling me something. (laughs) I mean, you know, 
Yeah, the audacity that this black woman knows more than you. Yes, yes, I do. Lord Jesus. Looking beyond the color of one's skin can be a challenge because I want to be able to look beyond but then when you say something and it's color based and you ask me questions and it's based on my color, black people, this and black experience and, you know, the black friend that you have. As much as I would like to be a bit colorblind every now and again, I can't do that because someone is going to remind me that I'm black. Someone is going to offer me a position or opportunity because, well, we need more black people. How come I can't just be brought into the room, not because it's a black experience, a black topic, a black culture, or because she might know a thing or two because there's some black folks that she could talk to. Why can't I be brought into the room just because I have demonstrated, proved myself that I can be of assistance to all people. Mm. I want to look beyond color, but then I look in the mirror and I look at my hair and I say, mm, I'm going into an atmosphere that they don't want me to look this way. I might not get sales today if I decide to go all natural. So I'm reminded that girlfriend, you know, you need to straighten out hair or if you ain't got time to straighten out hair, you better put a wig on. If I want to be myself as this woman had advised, that means that I'm going to say some things that might ruffle your feathers and then it's going to cause you to think black. You're going to think about the fact that there's a black woman talking to you like this. So as much as I would love to be completely 100% myself, I don't know who myself really is. I told her that. She was confused. What do you mean? Huh? Even after I explained, well, you see, there's been so many things that have happened, not just in my personal experience, but even in my DNA, all mixed up. I really at times don't know who I am. There's times where I tend to disassociate due to past pain and trauma. I don't know at times, sometimes who I am. I guess you are going to try to help me find out who I am, right? You can't do that. You can't do that by reminding me to be myself when I've already explained to you that I really don't know at times who myself is, especially if I walk into an atmosphere and there's a lot of money on the table. <laughs> I've got to be somebody different. I walk into a neighborhood. I can't be myself. I can't look the way I really want to look because I recall what happened to my brother or my sister who went into that neighborhood. You won't let me be myself. How about that? When I tried to be myself and speak some wisdom, some knowledge, you didn't like that constructive criticism. You're the assistant, not the leader. <laughs> yes, I want to look beyond the color of one's skin. Yes, I want to be able to look beyond that color that is used as the adjective before the noun. But you won't let me. I show up with the white man 
or with the white woman and you looking me up down and sideways. I start talking in a very articulate way, drawing on my college education and you say I'm talking white. I want to be myself, but will you let me? I want to love who I want to love, but a long time ago, I learned the hard way. That ain't necessarily the right thing to do if you want to stay in somebody's good graces. But then when I fell out of somebody's good graces, (laughs) I just didn't care. Didn't care about what they thought of my circle. What does it matter? Some individuals need to have a conversation with others, especially a younger generation, without constantly beating them with that adjective in front of that person. White this and white that, red this and red that, yellow this and yellow that, and black this and black that. What are you doing to that child? You're conditioning that child. You are saying some negative things to that child, giving them a defeatist mindset before they even walk out the door. You know how them white people are. You know them white people, they got this and they got that. Wait a minute, well, can I get this and can I get that? You, you, you never say about the things that the black people got. There are black people who got a lot of stuff. Let's just be honest. There are black people who did not get beat. Did not get caught up in neck holds, choke holds, and any other kind of hold. I mean, those people are out there. Can we talk about them sometime? Or what about the black people who never did go to jail? You conditioning me for a lifestyle that don't apply to me. Mama, daddy, brother, sister, cousin. Uncle, aunt, I'm speaking somebody's truth. Even if they can't articulate in the way that I'm articulating articulating it today, I'm still saying the truth. The truth that some folks, you know you're guilty as charged. God said, I need you to look at me. You say, uh-uh, I ain't looking at that white Jesus. God said that they're not supposed to be making no images of me. There's supposed to be no graven images of me. Man does not know what I look like. Once again, get your mind and your eyes and everything else off the idol. And I need you to get one with the God that you know exists. You got folks who they don't even want to let you praise the Lord like you want to praise the Lord. Read the word because they're always interjecting something about white and black and this and that. My God doesn't have a color. I may have some faith-based conversation that is religious in nature because there's the wisdom that my God speaks. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. But my faith don't have a color on it. I'm looking beyond the skin color. I'm looking beyond the adjectives that define the nouns or describe the nouns. I want to be able to go somewhere like my predecessors wanted the same things where you're not looking at me crooked at, side at. You're not assuming that I'm going to steal something out of your purse that's seated next to me. I need to be able to go into the store and you don't give me all of these looks and then go so far as to follow me. That happened not that long ago at Dick's. I just want to be that one that doesn't have to think black. Go into a certain hood and I got to talk black. Whatever that is, right? Whatever someone wants to define that is. I want to be the one that someone doesn't tell me that I'm not keeping it real because I'm talking professional. Or I'm not being myself because I know how to assimilate with you all. (laughs) 
Oh, what is myself then? Oh, it's all those movies you've been watching. And because I'm not acting like what you have conditioned yourself and convinced yourself that black people should act like, you tell me that I should be myself. I wanted to go deep, but then I said, I don't like to waste my time with ignorance. <laughs> I've played the dumb role long enough. And now I've got to play that role that shows what I'm really made of. And we know that what we really made of will get us killed. I had to humble myself. I had to dumb myself down in order to assimilate with some of these folks out here. Because sometimes you've got to play another role in order to get the information that you need. Sometimes you've got to present yourself as not knowing some things. And I slipped up one day and even said that so that people will teach you and will, you know, help you out. Because if you go into an establishment thinking and looking like you know everything, which maybe you do know a lot, <laughs> they may not want to help you. I'm looking beyond the color of people's skin. I'm looking at what they're doing that is causing a system of racism and how I'm going to create my own plan where we're not going to keep talking like this white this and white that. This new generation that I'm raising, they're not going to be walking around with a defeatist mindset. This new generation that I'm influencing is braver, stronger, <laughs> smarter, wiser, and it is doing its share of things where they're not having a self-esteem issue. They may have some issues, but it ain't going to be self-esteem. They may have some issues, but it's not going to be walking around without a creator. They might have some issues, but it's definitely not going to be the issues that make them feel like they've lost and that they don't have a chance to win. If we're going to move in a movement, it starts with your personal mindset and then you move toward those people that you're around on a daily basis. And then you move toward the people who are in power positions and you place yourself there, whether they welcome you or not. And you criticize whether they like your criticisms or not. And you get some things implemented and at that level that they put you in where they've told you to talk to this group, you say, you know what, this isn't good enough. I'm going to talk to the person that's over that person. Oh, they don't like that. Oh, well, so what? And then if you don't get results with that person, then you're going to go over that person's head. And if you got to drive somewhere or you got to hop on a plane to get somewhere, then you do what you need to do. Of course they want you to stay at home. Of course they want you to stay over there in the field. Of course they want you to stay in somebody's bed. They don't want you out here. They don't want your face being seen. There are those. Those non-blacks. Those that have their personal prejudices. That don't want to see you. Because you make them feel uncomfortable. They who are white. There are those white people that don't want to see you because you love them. And you can fill in the blank. They're still out here. 
They learn from their fathers and mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and great grandmothers and great grandfathers on how to act with those people. And loving them is not on the list. And when you're out there loving on them, they hate that. But so what? (laughs) That's a movement in and of itself. When you're talking about those black people for too long, that's a movement. When you're talking about how you're going to help those black people, that's a movement. When you are posting up things here, there, and everywhere on your social media, that's a movement. When you are offering positions of authority, Knowing full well a black person is capable of doing it, that's a movement. And I give, I give all credit to the first white person who encouraged me. She wasn't in a position of power, but she encouraged me to take on a position of power. It wasn't a black person who told me, you can take on that editor role at the college. It was a white person who told me that I could take on that editor role at a college. It wasn't a black person who told me that you're ready to be a manager. It was a white person who encouraged me first Then the black person opened up the door for me to walk in. It was a tag team effort. (laughs) Come on. I'm trying to encourage some folk. See, when you got God, you got people who encourage you too. Plus, you got the education, the know-how to get some things done. You orchestrate a plan and you work on the low levels first, cause you gotta know some things, right? You work out there in the field and then you work your way to the top. Yeah, it's who you know. And it's also who you don't know, but you about to know because God knows. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God would not have us to be stupid. He said, I need for some of you all in your movement to look beyond the color of skin. I need you all to start talking beyond the color of skin. I need you to start implementing plans beyond the color of skin. We made our mistake back in the 90s and some who were moving and shaking back in the 80s because we put too much focus on the color of skin. We named organizations with the color of skin who was behind the organization. Uh Uh-uh, not this generation. Don't do that because you just limited yourself. But what about those signs? The signs I got, this color and that color. That's not the movement. The movement is what you do. The movement is what you say. It's the movement that God ordains that you're about to be a part of. Movements don't last without God. Let me say that again. Worldly movements, mm -mm. they don't last without God. They're not life changing. They're not spiritual changing. They're not doing the types of things that will bring about true change where people will no longer think in terms of color. Those movements that are doing right, doing well, are those right now that got prayer warriors behind them. They didn't start off well. But then there were those of faith who got behind them and said, I'm going to pray. I may not be out there in the street, but I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your movement. I'm going to pray that God turns some people's hearts towards not only the people 
that are being victimized, but to him, simply to him. God cares about what's in the heart, not the color of your skin. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in Om Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you in advance. Blessings to you.